Hi there, come on in. It's hunting season in Michigan. We have a season right now with no licenses, no limits, no regulations, and everybody's welcome. I'm talking about mushroom hunting. Those tasty morels are appearing all over in woods, fields, even orchards and golf courses. Kathy Beitler and I, well joined by John Ford, of course, behind the camera, went on a morel hunt recently. We'll show you how it's done. I imagine a few fresh morels would spice up our recipe for Michigan salmon chowder, which we'll show you. Plus, lots of information on upcoming events and outdoor news, so you stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. Bird! Hey. Bird! Well, the trillions are out. Hot, humid days, the same ones that mosquitoes like. These are the days to be searching the woods for the most delectable of all wild mushrooms, the morel. Kathy Beitler and I found a few early ones at the end of April. Okay, now before, we walked across the top of the ravine and we came up on the right. bottom. Yep. And we always found them on the bottom, particularly up on this uh, northerly slope. slope. Mm -hmm. Now, none of this is guaranteed in mushroom hunting. I don't care where you found them the day before. They can be on the top of the ridge, the bottom, the sides, by the dead trees, out in the open. Mm -hmm. But as far as garb goes, wearing a mosquito net, not for camouflage, right. but for the mosquitoes, I'm covered with bug dope, with DEET. I'm not. All exposed parts. Another thing, when you're in the woods, white, as I recall, it's white shirts. Right, it'll that, draw them. That tend to attract mm -hmm. mosquitoes. Blue is also an another color that's not real favorable for mosquitoes, but well, I've got a fly on right there. Well, they won't go through the uh, that material like right. they would a cotton. But you do want to protect yourself because mosquitoes can kind of put a damper on, <laughs> on the mushroom. You're swatting running. mosquitoes, you can't pick mushrooms. Yeah, where the mushrooms are, the mosquitoes are. Last night we had rain, some oh, good driving of, rain. Yeah. Nice sun this morning. Oh, it's steamy, yeah. muggy. They should be just popping through. <laughs> That's right. We're here right on the brink of May. So let's let's head right down into, into the woods. Check our prime spots first. You know, I should have mentioned footwear. Now, tennis shoes are okay for mushroom hunting, but hunting or hiking boots that lace up, they give your feet better support for the uneven ground you'll be walking over. It takes a while for your eyes to get used to looking at the dark spots and leaves. The black morels are the ones that are popping out right now. We're probably going to find some, some of the... They look like white morels, but they're actually what's called false morels. We'll show you when we get some. Unlike deer hunting, our quarry never moves and is totally silent. Finding morels takes the same skills that you need, I'll say, when you look for pieces to fit into a jigsaw puzzle. There's one, there's one, right? In fact, there's two of them. I got two of them spotted. Can you, uh, right into this stick. The nice thing about mushrooms is they don't move. <laughs> and you can talk and everything else. But they could be all around here. Can you see it there under the stick, John? Oh yeah, okay. Right there. Now this is what's called a false morel. Now this is the way you pick them. There's, there's a lot of controversy about this. I break them off right there and leave the, the roots or the fibers underneath there. Now this is a false morel. You see how it's not attached? Right there, you can, you can pull this cap right off. That's not a true morel. A true morel, as we'll see in a little bit, I'm sure we'll find one, or a bunch of them will be attached all the way around, but that's a, it's called a false morel. Some people can be more allergic to these if they're allergic to anything. Now hold it, I had another one here too. There, yep. right here, John. They're distinctive when you get an eye for them, but that's another one and we reach down to pinch it off. Another reason for pinching it off, I really don't think it makes any difference if you do pull them up by the roots, despite what people say, there's been a lot of whole controversy about why do they grow, how do they grow, where do they grow, and it's a network underneath the ground of, of little fibers uh, that connect these things together. So they don't really have roots in the traditional sense. But look at that, that wrinkly top. That's the distinctive morel. This is the false morel. We'll find uh, some of the little black ones. But we put them right in a bucket. You want to keep them in an open container if you use plastic like this. Keep them in an open open container or a plastic bag, or no, not a plastic bag, a uh, paper bag or a mesh bag. 
it's not that plastic bags are taboo because I've used them before. Yeah. The problem is they can develop humidity and moisture that spoils the mushrooms. Morels need to have fresh air. Okay, you don't see it? Okay. Tell me if you see it. Watch my footsteps, okay? Okay, I'm gonna fall. Are you watching my footsteps? Yep. Do you see it? No. Nope. You watch my footsteps? Look right in between my feet. Oh, there it is. Right in between them. So you see it there? Yeah. That's a pretty good size one too. I think I see another one up a ways. It's a pretty nice one, eh? Yeah, excellent. I pretty much... You've got good eyes for this, Fred. I this area. I think there's one here. Sometimes it's... Are you rolling now or oh, no? Oh, here's one. I found oh, one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is my first one here. <laughs> you did. I walked right by it. Poking up and looking at you. I thought I saw. An, oh yeah, here it is. That is one. It's punching up right, right yep. through this the leaves right, right there. I tell you, we came through here last night, and I swear, last evening these weren't out. This rain popped them up. But I'm frustrated that there aren't the black ones. You'll never find a prettier time of year in the woods, and you'll never find as many small and interesting flowers and wonders of nature than you'll run across when searching for morels. Oh, I've hit the mother load. I see one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I had my eye on another one up there, too. Don't, yeah, don't take too many steps, John. Right here, let's start the, the carnage will begin. Here's one right here. That's the first one I saw. Oops. Now, I took my eyes off them, so I'm gonna have to find them all over again. But they're right, oh, here it is. Oh, here's another, this is a, this is a true morel. Here's a false morel, a very small one, right here. Oh, 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 Kathy. You got it? Oh, this is, oh, we're in a hot spot right here. Watch it when you walk there, John, because. Yeah, I am. They, they might be all over. Here's a black okay. one. Here's a black one right here. We're in the true morels. I've gotten about five or six, and I know there's some, I saw them on that hillside right behind John. Now this is a little easier to spot, but there's one that's laying down. It, it appears to be growing sideways. I, well, it is. Look, we'll pull the leaves back. See, it hasn't popped its head up yet. Oh, okay. I don't know if that one would pop up, but we've got it now. It's yours now. Yep, now there are more. Oh, right there. Right over here. I shouldn't, I get so excited I lunge at them. But right here's one. And I thought there were a couple more up on here. Lost them for now. You know, the thing is, you don't have to be quiet. You don't have to sneak. But you sort of do. <laughs> and that's why they call it mushroom hunting. Black and white morels have pitted heads that are built right into the stems. You can't pull the tops off like you can with the false morel, an imposter that has a different wrinkling pattern to its cap that you'll, you'll learn to recognize it quickly. Now the sun's beating down on the wet forest land. You can really feel it. Oh yeah, they're gonna be popping out like crazy. But here's what we got for, I don't know, maybe two hours. We did not mean to spend this much time. <laughs> We're just gonna come for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, look at that. You folks can know that within 45 minutes, we'll be eating these <laughs> cooked in butter. Ooh. It'll be terrific. I tell you, mushroom hunting is as much fun it when is. you get into it as, as any other activity. Whether it's turkey hunting, deer hunting, you can yeah. <laughs> really get into this. And the great thing is they don't move at all. <laughs> but they have the advantage of all the camouflage. Wow. White morels, black morels, false morels, they all taste great when fried in butter. And if you're not allergic to these mushrooms, May is the month to join the hunt. Now this morel here 
might not look too appetizing. It's a, it's a true morel. You can see the stem and the cap are all connected as one, but this is dried, dehydrated. It's not ruined by any means. In fact, we did this on purpose. Put it on a thread, hung it out to dry. This is how they turn out. You can reconstitute them in water and they taste great even years later. That's one form of hunting and one form of preserving the trophies. But now let's talk about some more traditional forms of hunting and fishing for the big ones in our trophy book. What a great picture. Downtown Lansing, the board and water and light in the background. The trophy is a 35-inch carp held by Ron St. Germain, who had to be a winner that day in the Grand River's Lunker Derby. How about another oddball species? A bowfin or dogfish caught in Houghton Lake by local angler Jerry Harding, who was fishing from shore, casting a rapala in the middle of May. That bowfin was 27 inches long. And now for a catfish. This was a 15-inch black bullhead, slightly over two pounds, which makes it huge for a black bullhead. It was caught on a crawler by Frank Tashner from Traverse City, who was fishing Lake Cadillac, have a darn good fishing hole. From Little Bay to Knock came this foot-long rock bass. Bruce Larson from Gladstone caught it on a jig. And on a MEP spinner came this 15 and a half inch black crappie from Pine Lake No. 2 in Barry County. Dave Rose from Richland landed it. And here's another mid-May crappie, 16 and a half inches, two and a half pounds. This one hit a night crawler on Linaway County's Mill Pond Lake, or maybe it's just Mill Pond. But Wayne Lowe from Tecumseh is happy with his catch. From Anuskong Bay off the St. Mary's River, Bill Scoble from Flushing was casting a MEPS number no. five bucktail and landed this 46 inch, nearly 24 pound Great Lakes muskie. That was at 1.30 in the afternoon. Oh boo, who wants to think about snow right now? Well, take a look at this buck. 10 pointer with an 18 inch spread. Mark Maxson from Kalamazoo got it in Misaki County. That snow still doesn't look inviting? Well, back to mid-May. Let's check out a 17-inch brook trout from Union River in Ontonagon County. Richard McKenna's very understanding wife is holding this trophy. You searched a long time for somebody like your wife who would let you on your honeymoon. Well, she was there with me, so. Were you, yeah, I, yeah, I understand. Okay, okay that's. No, I mean fishing. She was fishing with right, you. Right, right. You, how long? This is on your honeymoon. You said, right. honey, let's go fishing, uh, trout fishing, and this will be a really no, we great trip. And we, were, we took a week and went camping up in the Porcupine Mountains. And uh, two-man tent, downpour, seven days, you know. It's the highlight of the honeymoon. Well, no, it wasn't a highlight of the honeymoon, but. It's, I got to ask you. I got to ask you. You're going to get me in trouble here. W was this your first marriage? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, it still is? It's still on? Yeah, it is. Great. How long has this been? She forced me to come tonight. Is that right? Yeah. She didn't want to come to the banquet. Oh, I did, but, uh, you know, I... Well, why isn't she up here? Where is she? She's back there somewhere. We ought to, we ought to be giving her an award for putting up with you. I tell you. And there she is, the brand new Mrs. McKenna holding the trophy that Mr. McKenna respectfully transferred to his new bride, making Mrs. McKenna our Michigan Outdoors Newlywed Angler of the Week. Papa Bears in Luzerne, Saturday night, will be there. I hope you will, too. Now, another event we couldn't squeeze in the calendar, the Outdoor Fair coming up the end of June in Houghton Lake. Our shooting uh, show is always a popular event. Last year, Red Ball was there from Farwell. He's a sporting clays champ, and he was trying to teach me, in front of the crowd, how to shoot at clay pigeons with a shotgun from the hip. The whole idea of hip shooting is eye-hand coordination, and right now Fred is probably one of the top eye-hand coordinators in the countryside. Yes. I see him do it with a bow. Uh, what the idea is, Fred, is to tuck the gun under your, under your armpit, use this as your point finger, run it along the side of your barrel. You get the flight of the bird, look at the bird, don't pay no attention to the gun barrel, and just come up with it with a little cant from your body, and you can do it. Guaranteed. I haven't done it yet. Guaranteed. Guaranteed, okay. Five. Five. Huh? If I break two, I'm better than Harry. That's right. 
And here it goes, ladies and gentlemen. We want to hush over the crowd now. Oh, put my finger along like this? Please move your finger up towards the front of your gun. Thank you, sir. Look at the bird only. Bird! Ah, I don't know about that. Bird! Your gun is a little bit low. Pick up oh. the flight pattern a little bit higher. Bird! Oh, I need one. One foot. One foot. What do you mean one, one foot? One foot. You're shooting a foot underneath the target. Now, that's easy to see now from this angle, but for the life of me, I couldn't see it then. Bird! This is a very frustrating lesson. Bird! Yeah! <laughs> Why, I ask myself, do I have to learn to shoot from the hip? Because Red Ball can do it. Bird! Hey! Bird! Red Ball and Harry Reinfelder are two Bird. shooters who compete in trick shooting at the outdoor fair, trying to outdo each other Bird. with feats of skill that, well, I tell you, they're fun to watch. Bird. Right. Very good. Good ball. Red Ball will be back with more tricks up his sleeve this year, and so will I. Bird. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, I never claimed to be the world's best shot, but I'm going to have a few tricks I'm practicing on. I know Harry Reinfelder is, Red Ball. We're going to have a great shooting show at the fair. Good stuff coming. we got a recipe, Charlie, you're going to love. I know I will. An original concoction, another one by Mary Fortin from Sutton's Bay. She's been a perennial winner in our Fish and Wild Game cooking contest, Kathy Beitler. Oh, a lot of ingredients to this chowder, like there is in all chowders. You got your onions and celery and potatoes, and she called for bacon, which kind of added to this chowder. Mm -hmm. A little bit of accent, uh, just kind of a form of salt for flavoring. Basically brings out all the good flavors in a chowder. And you want those to cook very good, and you don't want to, your potatoes to overcook, though, because they will mash down. Ooh, and crushed red, red pepper. pepper just gives it kind of a tang mm -hmm. that you, you don't find in other chowders. And it goes your crushed bacon. And then just let everything go all cooked together. And then you put the fish in last so that it doesn't fall all apart. Salmon is what Salmon, you call for yep. in this. Or you could use lake trout in this. It would be very, very good. And then you want to just thicken it at the very end with a little bit of cornstarch and water. Hmm. Well, you know, Bob Garner was lucky enough to taste all of these award-winning recipes we're using in November and December at, the, at our cooking contest. I wonder. Oh, wine goes wine, in Wine, just a very, at the very end, just to give it just a little bit of different flavor. I wonder if Bob uh, thinks your concoction is as good as Mary's. Mary's a heck of a heck of a cook, heck of a chef. Anything you want to, any way you want to want to word it, she's really good. And, but I think Kathy has come up with one that's just as good, maybe even a little bit better oh. than Mary's. Oh. No, really. <laughs> you're going to have to deal with Mary the next yeah. time you see her. Well, Mary understands. She's always got great recipes, but she does. This she is really this excellent. One from Mary, you know it's good. And you know this has that crushed red pepper in it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some more hot sauce. Really? I love we're it. We're going to hear from Mary until she sees this. <laughs> I, I tell you, but this recipe you can adapt. You could put different spices in it. It's oh, great. Sure. You know, and and it really is with with deer season come. You know, deer season coming up. Be a great recipe to take, take to camp, camp too, oh. because when it's warmed up, I've eaten this recipe. When it's warmed up, it gets better and better and better. Great. How recipe. much would you take to a deer camp? Uh, depends on what the, my deer camp. Well, there's eight or nine guys up there, uh, probably two gallons, one for me and one for them. <laughs> oh, it's another award winner, another classic by Mary Fortin from Sutton's Bay, Michigan Salmon Chowder, a dish everybody would like. This recipe, along with all of our recipes for May, June, and July, are all in all great news in the outdoors and for mushroom hunting, so get outdoors if you can. It's a great place to be. See you next week. Oh, we're in a hot spot right here. Watch it when you walk there, John, because... Yeah, I am. They, they might be all over. Here's a black okay. one. Here's a black one right here. We're in the true morels.